Hey, it looks like we are live. So welcome back. Today, I'm going to be building a virtual machine in C. So um, this is heavily inspired by um, Soding. Uh, it's Soding, his uh, virtual machine in C series, where he developed BM, which is his uh, virtual machine. Uh, and then all the other stuff that goes with it. Um, I will leave a link to that, as well as uh, the playlist. Uh, it is very good. I haven't watched it all yet, but this is where all my knowledge of virtual machines comes from at the moment. Um, yeah, so I didn't know much about how virtual machines worked. I knew about them like with Java virtual machine and stuff, obviously, but I didn't really understand how it worked. Um, and then I found this series, so I started watching it and it was super interesting. Um, it's something that I have wanted to do for a bit of time. I've just been putting it off. But I decided might as well just start it and I can kind of learn as I go, right? Um, so let's see. Uh, all right. So the name of this virtual machine, I was thinking, so I think we would, we can call it titanium. I can spell it right. Uh, virtual machine or Tim for sure. Uh, I just think that's kind of funny. Titanium machine, right? So, so that is what we'll call it um and basically the way the virtual machine works is you have you're basically emulating an actual processor a cpu right uh, so you have an instruction set and then you execute certain things based on whatever the instruction is so then you can have a list of instructions and it will go through each one and then execute it right so it basically emulates it uh kind of like how an interpreter works um so what you can do from there is you have the instructions you can compile them into a byte code um and then that can be written and read from and it basically uh is a way of storing all the instructions and then from there you can build an assembly on top of it like your own custom assembly with all the instructions which can compile into the byte code for your language and then from there you can make like an actual programming language, like well, whatever, you know? Um, and then you can compile that into your assembly, which then gets assembled into your bytecode. So, uh, yeah, getting a little ahead of ourselves because we don't have anything yet. Um, so I'm basically going to be using um, this as sort of a jumping off point, uh, and I'm going to do things differently. But at first, it's going to look a lot like uh, the initial implementation of BM. Uh, so that is why I am linking it, because that is why I'm basing it up. So... Uh, so let's just make a file here. Uh, we're going to need that. std lib. And uh, public string dot h. Uh, I'm just getting it all out of the way now. Alright, so uh, let's do a hello world and make sure everything's working. Alright, and let's actually let me uh, make a build.sh file. Alright, and we'll open it up here. Uh, so we GCC, and then let's see, uh, wall and let's try and we will do, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this now. All right, and if we run it, uh, hello world. All right, so basically we need an instruction set. So let's do that. So that'll be an enumerator, uh, and then instruction set. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, and I spelled type wrong. Uh, all right, so we have the instruction set. So we could have an instruction push, uh, pop, add, and then print, right? That's what we'll start with. Uh, all right, let's see. So then, um, we are going to basically, in here, get rid of this, we can... Uh, let's see. So we need to actually define a program. So let's do that. Uh, so program, and it'll be an array, right? So let's actually, um, and we'll just do uh, our program size as well. Uh, no, I think we need to do that. All right, we'll do that. And all right. So then we want to set it to the different values. So the first one, uh, actually we need an instruction. So 
let's see. Uh, let me think about how to do this. Uh, da, da, da. Actually, this needs to be a struct. All right, and then this will be instruction. So this needs an operator. And then we also need a uh, type. So we can set the message for the type first. Uh, the type can be equal to uh, init push. And then the uh, operator uh, or the value. So we'll push uh, 15. Uh, yeah. And then we'll have another one. Uh, pop. Or no, we'll do print first uh, just to get it working and then uh, that doesn't need an operator actually uh, yeah okay so so this is the program uh, let's see I think I can do this actually and then we'll do let's see so this is going to be a, an instruction actually um <clears throat> Then we need the program size. So actually, I don't want to set it up here. So the program size, uh, this will be a macro, and it will expand. So we'll have size of size of program divided by size of program zero. Yeah. So then wherever we put program size, we'll expand in that. So now I think we can uh, loop through. Uh, and then let's see. Then program size. All right, and then we can have a switch statement. So we can do uh, let's see, inst dot type. Actually, we want program uh, dot type. Yeah. So I think that's right. And then we'll have a case for inst push break. Uh, and then case inst pop, break. Uh, case inst add, and we'll break. And then finally, inst print, and we'll break. And uh, we get the indentation unit got a little messed up. All right, so now we are going to need a stack. So if we just define that, um, let's see, and then max stack size. So we'll need to define that. Uh, my screen has gotten very orange. All right, uh, max stack size, and we'll do that for now. Uh, and then we'll make push and pop. Void uh, push, and then pop. So the push is going to take a value, and we'll set. Uh, actually, we need uh, stack size, just the current stack size. Uh, stack stack size <coughs> plus plus equals um equals value stack size plus plus uh yeah I think that's better uh and then from there we in the pop we can do stack uh actually if we want to do return stack stack size um yeah I think that is right uh yeah we can adjust it. All right. So then when we push, we're just going to want to push um, the value. So, wait, oops. Uh, let's see. Dot. Uh, actually, uh, I'll name this two value here. Yeah. That might be better. It's not really an operator. All right. Uh, yeah. And then for the print. We will just um, the pop. All right, and I think that's enough to see if this works. Uh, so if you build it, all right, let's see. Uh, all right, this is semicolon. All right, and here we also need to, um, no, never mind. Let's see. Uh, We got a single in there as well.
<laughs> Alright, uh, there's a lot of problems, so let's see. Bum, bum, bum. So I think I... Ah, uh, yes. Alright, uh, let's see. So I feel as though I have... I'm missing a semicolon. You can kind of separate stuff out. Uh-huh. Give me a moment. Not sure. Do, do, do. Mm hmm. Um. Oh, here is the problem. Whoops. All right, and there we go. So let's see. So we can run it, and then fifteen. Okay, so it actually worked. So it pushed fifteen to the stack, and then it printed it. I just had some problems because I. Stupid. All right. Uh, so now we can implement pop. So that is just pop. Yeah, we don't actually need to write that. Either. So pop. Ah, uh, yes. And then let's see. So it's actually then yeah, add. Uh, so that is gonna be. Actually, it works better if we define it here. A. Uh, A equals pop. And B equals pop. And then. We are going to push a plus b. Uh, so we don't have any checking, but if we did this, uh, actually let's add it here. So let's do type equals inst um, pop. Let's test if that works. And then there should be nothing on the stack. So if we run this, yeah, so zero. Um, okay. So let's actually add some checking as well. Er, and before I do that, let me just push again, and then we should just have the one thing on the set. All right, so that, uh, actually, let's make it a different value. 13 and 11. Just to make sure it's working. And 11. Okay, so that looks good. So yeah, let's just check um, if stack size is less than or equal to 0, then we will... Uh, error stack underscore. Uh, because we don't have anything left in the stack, so it unclips. Uh, and let's then here we can do if stack size is greater than or equal to max stack size, then we will error stack overflow. It's like the website. And exit it. All right, and there we go. So let's make sure we did all that right. Yep. All right. So that looks good. So now we can add even more operations. So let's just copy this a couple times. So add, sub, multiply, and divide. And so now if I build this, yeah, we get one. So that's what I want. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll put it right here. So let's see. In uh, sub comes next. So a equals pop. B equals pop. Push. A minus B. And then multiply. Uh, same thing. Got the semicolon. A times B. And then we're going to do a equals pop. B equals pop. And we'll do. Oops. Uh, push a divided by b and so we do need checking to make sure we're not uh, dividing by zero but we don't need to do that yet uh, i forgot to break all right and all right let's actually test it out so instead of popping it here we'll do dot type equals inst um subtract uh, so we'll subtract it and then let's see so we'll swap these around actually. So it should be two, negative two. All right, uh, hang on, actually. Hmm. Oh yeah, because that's the first value that we pop. So yeah, all right. Mm, perhaps we should shift this around actually. So I feel like it should go in that way. That makes more sense. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's try multiplying. I think we need to do the same thing with division. All right. Uh, yeah. So we'll try multiplying now. Multiply. And yeah. So I'm just gonna assume that. Well, we can try something else. So let's do two times two. Yeah. I can figure that out. And all right, so that seems to work. And then division, so this should be one. One. All right, so that's looking good. So what do we need to do now? Um. Uh, let's see. Let's just add a function. Uh, print stack, so we can view the stack. Uh, let's see. Uh, stack size. Let me just the current element of the stack. All right, and then at the end here, we'll print or uh, yeah, print stack. Uh, and let's instead of doing that, we'll push a bunch of different values. So, uh, one, two, three, and four. Run that, uh, four, one, two, and three. Uh, hmm. I don't know why it prints it in that order. Uh huh. That's a problem. Actually, I think we want to start at stack side. And then put it in zero. Minus, minus. There you go. All right. And let's run that. Four, four, three, two. All right. Uh, not quite. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to that actually. Hit print. Uh, zero, four, three, two, one. All right. Uh, we don't want this zero. So, oh, yeah. So we want to actually do. Stack size minus one. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so that's how we want actually. So now we can add macros for all the instructions as well. So I think we can do that like um uh F instruction push <coughs> and then we'll just expand this out. It's push r dot value equals x. Uh, so we actually need to do like that. <clears throat> right. And we can have set of push and pop and we don't need a value. None of them actually need a value. Except for push. All right. Uh, and then yes, add. All right, we can change this to inst pop. Inst add. Inst sub, inst multiply, 
Things divide, and then one more for push. I mean, print. Uh huh. So, div more stuff. All right, and I think that covers all the ones now. So now instead of doing this, we can do def ins push by. All right, so here we go, and. Push uh, 10. So then if we print out the stack, 10 and 5. All right, so that looks good. Uh, and let's make sure this is all of them. So then if we add it, it should, should be 15. And if we subtract, it should be let's see, negative 5. Okay. Uh, multiply 50. Then divide. And zero because that's not right. Uh, if we swap it around, actually, two. All right. Uh, yeah. So that is working. And then we can print, and that should print five. And then yeah. So it looks the same because we are printing the same at the end. Uh, but if we print it twice, actually, if we get rid of it, it's the same thing. Uh, but yeah. So then all is working. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I will. Actually, go ahead and knit this right now. Uh, yeah. And we did a very basic, beautiful matching with the structure. And then I'll push. Actually, I need to set because I don't have it set up. Uh, and let me copy the link. Mm -hmm. And push it. Okay. Um. So now that should be up. Yes, indeed. Uh, seems to be working. So we have. Actually, I should add then get ignored for that. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to touch one now. All right. Um. So what do we need to do now? So it'd be nice if we could write this and read it from a file. So uh, write program to file, something like that. And let's see. So we'll take the uh, file path. So we can use um, file it equals at open file path. And I think that'll work. And we want to uh, so if file actually we need to add right and then B so bytes we're writing bytes to it uh, hence bytes code uh, if file is null then I think that's what it turns to say uh, then we'll print out error would not write to file uh, file and exit again. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so we're checking that now. So to write it, uh, let's see. Forget what it is. What the um, yeah, f right. That's what we want. So if we look at f right, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have f right in here. Uh, f right. Yes. Uh, there we go. So we need the pointer, which is the program. Uh, let's see. So this is the size. So I think that is size of program. Uh, maybe it's just one element of program. I'm not sure. Then this is the program size. And that uh, is a different value. I'm uh, not sure. Give me a moment. Uh, all right, this is gonna be the file. Let's see, uh, I feel like I duplicated arguments. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna remove this because we don't need that. There we go. All right, so let's actually try to do that. So we'll just write in, write 
we'll go in to file and we'll do um let's see uh, s by him all right and if you run that now we have test.tim and if we just uh show the contents of it it's not mine uh, i think you can hex dump it though. and we have some hex uh some but bytes we have some bytes so now we need to be able to read uh actually so this will return the instruction uh read program from file and we'll input the file okay. so file equals open file path and this time we're writing or i mean reading and if it's null this time it's a lot more commonly than with writing you can actually do the same thing as this basically do, do, do. Uh, could not read from file uh, okay so now we need to do something like this fc uh, file zero and then file n or hmm. um, I figured it is that might not be right we could do that uh, and then we're gonna do length equals uh let's see what is it i forget what it is mm, yeah okay it's seeking and then f tell yeah that file um yeah so that's the length and then we have to go back to the beginning so file and then seek that that is quite important and then we're going to read from the file. Uh, we actually need instructions. So instructions, now it's uh, size of things. So I think that's what we need to do. There's probably a better way to manage the memory, but we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, so this can just be instructions. Uh, size of instructions, zero, size and five. So that should work. And then we have to close the file. And then we will return instruction. So that should allow us to, instead of going through the program like this, we can go through the, uh, <clears throat> we'll call it loaded program. For now. All right, and I think that's the only instance of it. So then we can read program from file. That's not in. Uh, and we will do inst um loaded program equals that and this needs to be there we go all right and let's see so we have some errors uh da, da, da. this needs to be that whoops uh -oh. We mean to do that. Okay. So let's try that again. Alright. I need to variable length. Uh oh shoot. Yeah. This is length, not size. And now mm, this needs to be that as well. And then stack capacity. So did I call it something else? Um, max stack size. All right, and if we go back, now we can run it and it loads it from the file. So we get rid of this. And then we change the program to that. All right, yes, that's not going to work, actually, because we don't have that now. So <clears throat> I think we can fix that if we make another struct. And we will call this a uh, machine. So this will be the machine. So what are we going to have in it? This will be where the stack is stored. So we will have the stack. Okay, stack, stack. Uh, yeah. So then we can actually take this and we'll put it up here. 
Okay, and then we also need current set, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also need logo inside. So, mm -hmm. so then we can actually set a create a virtual machine in here. So machine machine size of and then what we can do here we can do machine uh let's see machine dot plugin size equals no uh I can see blank divided by eight actually uh yeah because uh that's the size of the individual bytes or yeah so we're setting the program size. All right, and then let's just initialize the machine here. Er, so we want to actually uh, inst structures. Yeah. So then <coughs> we do machine instruction. Cool instruction. So I'll actually make this lowercase i. All right, and then we'll return the machine from here instead. Machine. Okay, and we'll set this loaded machine, and then here. Loaded machine ins. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to have to change some stuff with how the stack works. All right. Yeah. This needs to be loaded machine instructions. Instructions. All right. In pop. I will here we actually want to take the machine. So machine machine and then machine stack side. And then yeah, so that should work. And then up here, that's our machine stack. All right. Yeah. So that should work. On right, here as well, we need to do. It. Alright, uh, pop. So, oh yeah, so we need to actually provide the instructions here, or in, provide the loaded machine. Actually, uh, we can do like a switch in the face. Uh, let's try that. So, 102, let's see, 28, uh, pop with pop loaded machine there we go and i think we're here <coughs> didn't go far enough, but that's okay all right and then here as well and then hello there um sorry i'm not sure exactly how to pronounce your name but i do see twitch in there <coughs> how are you doing Alright, uh so push one loaded machine. 
Let's see, did I change that actually? Uh, let's see. Yeah, this needs to take the machine as well. Alright. Um, I think I must have missed a semi. Ooh, this is probably a problem. Alright, and then now this is a problem. Mm hmm. To do, let's see. Not good. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, I am doing, I am doing well. Um, sorry that you are not. This is gonna be. C looks very hard, I can't understand. Um, it seems intimidating. Um, it's really not, not that bad. Uh, it's just, hey, it's got a learning curve, you know. Uh, it's not as bad as some other languages like C++ and stuff. Right. Um, let's see. Maybe the machine. Alright, and let's see. I work with JavaScript, but I hate it. Uh, I know how you feel. I used JavaScript for, it was like two years. Um, and then I just lost, uh, lost the passion for programming. And I wasn't sure why. Um, and then I started more, pretty recently with like C and lower level stuff and it's just been way more fun and yeah now I'm more excited about it than I have ever been before mm -hmm. machine zero I would recommend if you are able to um to learn C or another similar language to it like really get into it uh, it really helps you understand things a lot better We need to define this up here, actually. <laughs> All right. I've tried Rust before, but it was very hard for me to understand to do simple things. Um, I haven't worked too much with Rust, but it is a bit more complicated. Like C, it's really just a simple language. Like, uh, here, I can number of keywords in C. Uh, like this obviously doesn't necessarily reflect that, but uh, let's see. So there's 32, I suppose, 32 or 44 keywords in C. Uh, C++, on the other hand, uh, 95, so that's like three times the amount. And then in Rust, I'm not sure how many there are in Rust. Uh, let's see. Alright, there's not a good resource for this. 
But you can see the difference between C and C++. Uh, where are they? Right, that doesn't work. Uh, da, da, da. All right, uh, I can't find a list of it, but there's a lot of keywords, so trust me on that. Uh, C is rather simple compared to Rust. Uh, it's also more dangerous, I suppose. Like uh, you can go out of balance in uh, memory leaks and stuff, but it's good to work with that anyway. Uh, what did I call it? Program size. Program size. Okay. So yeah, in here, we need to accept. We'll accept the machine in there. And then as well as in here. So then let's see. And this can be a machine program. Machine program. And yeah, and that should work. We need to do a similar thing here. So instead of doing that, uh, yeah, we can do that, and that should work. Yeah, so we need to actually pass that here. All right. So actually, we don't have the loading machine there. So, yeah. Uh, ta -ta -da. actually create it here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass the loaded machine here and you figure it out. Um, <coughs> machine is not have purpose. Constructions, that's what it's called. Uh, right. I see, uh, mess that up. I just do it here. There we go. All right, I got it. Uh, da -da -da. I had to set up NeoVim to work with JavaScript. It's so cool. NeoVim is very cool. Uh, and it's very nice how customizable it is. It is a nice piece of software. Uh, yeah, so that won't work actually. Yeah. 
All right, so then now we just have one more thing here. So that doesn't work. Um, all right, uh, let me try this actually. <clears throat> Uh, let me reset up the uh, <coughs> the program that we had. Let's push five. Let's push five. Get add. Let's add. And then. And let's do it again. Uh, problem. Yeah, so here we need to pass the machine. Data machine, um, this program. Seems to be loading machine. All right, and push should exist. Um, hmm. Oh yes, All right. that is the problem. Okay. All right, and now if I run that, five. All right, so that's not right. Um. So let's look at this. Um, blah, blah, 77. Okay, so when we write it, we cannot get the size from that. So we need to. Um, why does that not get the number of right now? It's, um, Mm -hmm. So, we do this a different way. Mm -hmm. So, how else would we get the size of the structure? Whoops. Uh, again, divided by five of open zero. Okay, and we can just make this program size. Okay. Oh yeah, no equals. Oops. Alright, and now it should work. 
Uh, let's see. All right. Now, if I... All right, uh, it doesn't work. Mm. All right, yeah, so you do have to load it uh, for it to work. But now we can change it, uh, and it should work. So if we do sub instead, it should be zero. Yeah. And if we don't do anything, then two fives. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. Very cool stuff. Very cool. Um. So yeah, once we set it up uh, with where we assemble our assembly, we'd be able to calculate the program size in there. For now, uh, we can just do this, because this is how we're going to be writing the programs. Um, so that works fine. So, let's see. Yeah, so now we can implement some more operations. So, we have all those. Uh, something else we probably want is uh, dupe. Uh, yeah, we'll do that for now. So, then that would just duplicate whatever element is on the top. Um, <clears throat> so, we can add that here. And yeah, change this to all right, and then um, <clears throat> we should be able to just doop, and then let's see. So we need to pop loading machine. I right, actually set a equal to that, and then we will push machine a, and we'll do that twice. And that should do it. Um. Oh yeah, so we have to break as well. Oops. There we go. All right, so we done that. Uh, I didn't actually <coughs> didn't actually modify it. So let's do instead of that, we'll do. Let's do uh, and we will change this to be something different. So we know, say ten. All right, and ten ten. All right, and then yeah, and we can do add. And then it should be plenty. Yes. All right. So that is working. So now we can do swap as well. Uh, yeah. Swap. So swap is pretty similar. Uh, da, da, da. Swap. All right. And let's see. Whoops. And we'll push again. So, whoops. All right, five. Ah, uh, yes. And then I can swap it, and then we will um, put that. So then I think that'll be fine. Ah, uh, yeah. So then we just have to implement implement swap. I'll just yank that. There we go. All right. So. Uh, to swap, we need to pop a few of them. And then we push it in the opposite order. Alright, uh, I think that'll work. So let's see. Oh yes, this needs to be swapped. Alright, and if we run it, negative 5. Alright, yeah, so I did it in the wrong order, actually. So, uh, I think I should do this the other way, because... Yeah. This is well. Uh, I think that'd be better. So yeah, now we can change it back because that makes more sense. I think. Yeah. So five, and then if we do divide two. All right. Yeah. So that is looking good. Uh, let's actually add in the division. Uh. So if b equals zero, uh, then we will uh, error cannot divide by zero. Then we will alter it one. And yeah. So now if we try to do something like this and then run it, uh, ooh, okay. Oh yeah. So actually, it's a. Oh, should I put that in the wrong place? Actually, uh, that is. It's a problem. All right. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, there we go. So cannot divide by zero. Uh, otherwise, if you do two, then it should work and you five. There we go. Okay, so that is looking good. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me close out of that. So let's see if there's anything we can make a little bit better here. Uh, the stack seems to be working. Uh, yeah, so that needs to find up here. I don't want two stacks, actually. Right, and it still works, so that is good. Um, yes, yeah, so we should be able to... You know what? I forgot I was swapping. Uh, so I, yeah. Hmm. Let's see, is it better this way, or I think it... Hmm. We'll leave it like this for now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, now we can... Now we can do a lot of stuff. So, we can have... One, and then... Two... Three... Four... And five. And then we can swap it. And then let's see. And then swap it back. Swap it in, I mean. Uh, now, yeah. So now that does some stuff. And then let's actually print the top. Uh, and let's make sure that's also working. And then I'll get rid of this print stack. And there we go. Three. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So um, I will. We'll go ahead and commit that actually. Uh, it's going to move upon the stretching and move stack and stretching to a, a stretch called machine. Okay, and that should all be up here. Uh, yes. All right. So that seems to have worked. Uh, so what can we do now? Let's actually look at, um, let's see. What are we going to look at? Uh, I want to see assembly instruction. Let's just look at some of the instructions. Uh, cause that, well, maybe full machine instruction. Uh, we can look at the JVM instruction set. So that is a stack-based virtual machine. Uh, the thing with mine, I want to, like, it's going to start out. Right now, it's stack-based. I would like to add registers as well. Um, like, maybe, like, three or four of them. Because uh, I feel like that can be useful. Make something. So then we could, basically, we could work either stack-based, if you wanted to, or more register-based. Um, that's kind of how... At least um x8664 assembly works with nasm there's registers and the stack so you can work with both of them uh yeah all right uh th th th. All right. let's see does wikipedia have a list do we have push yeah we have all that uh let's see if there is instruction here want like a list of different instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crafting interpreters. Um yeah, this has some cool stuff in it with a read. Uh, virtual machine tutorial. I really just want to look at instruction set. Mm -hmm. Does this have some good stuff? Um, something that looks kind of familiar. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of instructions. Yeah, so there is like floating point numbers, which we'll get to that. Um, I would like this machine, virtual machine, to be something that is actually usable and like the programming language attached to it. Um, like, you know, obviously it's not going to be the same as Java or C Sharp or whatever, but something that you can do stuff, go to. Ooh, so that's something you can do labels in like jumping. That could be interesting. So, 
let's see how do we want to do that so perhaps i'm going to compare um compare yeah so compare equals um 30 than and less than uh and not equal something like that and then that looks at the two topmost elements uh and then compares them uh, and then it only hmm, we have to save the value well we could push the value to the top so one if it's true and then zero if it's false and then we can jump and that'll just pop the topmost value and jump based on yeah so i think we could do something like that uh so let's just add each here uh compare equals so we'll start with that uh yeah so you can go ahead and do this Compare equals. Uh, equal. All right. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. So yeah, we do that, and then yeah, compare things. Compare equal. Uh, yeah. So let's look at how we could do that. <coughs> uh, not compare equal and we'll break. All right. So. We need to pop the element. Then if A equals B, then we will push one. Uh, yeah. Else, we will push zero. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that would work. We run that, um, yeah, all right, we actually aren't printing anymore. Let's print the stack again. Uh, do, do, do. All right, uh, yeah, I forgot that. We need to pass the loading machine. So, zero. All right, so they're not equal, so that is good. Uh, now if we change it, one, they are equal. All right, so that's good. So now compare not equal. Uh, yeah. Oops. Not equal. Uh, yeah. Right here. So that'll be just about the same thing. Uh, just the opposite, obviously. So I can yank this actually. And we can just change this to that. There we go. Alright, and we have, oh yeah, I forgot to actually change this. Okay. Now it should work, and now if we do compare not equal, then it should be zero. Okay. Uh, and obviously the test will change that to two, one. Alright. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, so now we can add two more, <coughs> uh, greater than and less than, so G and L. Mm. Alright, greater than, less than. Um, so the top one will be comparing that if it's greater than me. Or hmm. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, there we go. So great. All right. So a a is the topmost element. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, and then we'll do we'll do another thing. Uh, let's, and we'll do the opposite. So yeah, let's make sure that works. Uh, I did change it. Uh, so greater, so that is greater. Uh, and then let's. All right, so that that sounds that seems good. So because two, yeah. Alright, so that works in a way that 
makes sense at least to think about. Uh, so now we have comparisons. Uh, Yeah, go to. So we'll need to implement jumps. Uh, we can just jump to a certain index. Uh huh. So yeah, based on the top of the stack. So so it'd be something like I don't have it yet. Uh, but you would provide a value. So let's see. This is zero. It's like yeah. So zero, for example. Uh, and then that would just jump there. Um, now obviously once it's assembly, you would add labels and stuff and you could put the labels, um, but we don't have that yet. So that would just jump to the zero width element. Um, that shouldn't be that hard, I don't think. And then, yeah, so dot value equals x. I need to do that actually. Okay, so let's add jump. All right, jump, be jump. Um, all right. So yeah, so we want to jump to the, whatever the index is. So if we go here, all right, and so we will pop the top value, and then if A, equals zero that means false else yeah mm, yeah we'll do that uh then we will do mm, ip equals zero yeah i think that's what we can do it's zero else mm, i think we can do something like that uh, and then you change this to no. uh, i think that'll work so yeah, this should be an infinite loop, right? We're stack on yeah, okay. Stack underflow. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Uh, I need to see why that happened. So we are popping too many times. Mm. <clears throat> we should there should be a value on the top though. What if we make this uh, then it works inside zero? There's an issue with our jump, so I need to figure out what that is. Um, let's make sure all this looks good. So, Uh, let's actually print the stack on each iteration, and then we can see we, where we are at. Actually, that's going to pop in, right? Or no, I don't think it will. Um, loaded machine. Alright, so let's try that. Alright, so it does go. So then it just... <clears throat> Alright, well let's make it something that won't be an infinite loop, and see what happens. Uh, so... Uh, so let's do... One, uh, and then we will push two, and we will add them. All right, like this. All right, so that'll be three. Uh, four. All right, so if it's greater, so then this should not jump in at the end. Uh, all right, so I think that worked. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to tell what this actually. Um, uh, it didn't. Yeah, so it prints nothing at the end because there is nothing. Uh huh. So. <clears throat> 
we do this, perhaps we want to push it back onto the stack though, after we are done with it. Yeah. <clears throat> so with the compare, I think we want to push it back. Um, which that's pretty easy. Uh, let's copy this. I want to push it back before though. So we'll push both A and B. And I will describe this. Yeah. So perhaps it'd be valuable to implement a key, which does not remove the yeah, which does not remove the topmost item, it just shows it to you. Uh, that may be valuable. So 544. Um, all right, yeah, so so now this works a little differently. So we're pushing one, push two, so we add it, so it becomes three. And then we have four and three. Yeah, all right, so actually let's jump to two. That's gonna add. So five, four, four. I'm not used to stack based languages, so I'm it takes me a second to process it all. So alright, so we push one and we push two. Mm. I don't actually want to do this. Uh we want to do um <clears throat> this right here that is what we want to do because we don't want to set to zero if it is not zero now it'll be it's still the same but um So, uh, I might need to, all right, so we push one, we push two, we add it, so it's three, so now the stack is three only, I then push four, then we compare, so if it's greater, then we jump to, all right, we'll change back to two, so it is greater, so now we have three and four on the stack, and then we also have, um, yeah, but we consume the one. So then we jump back to two. So zero, one, two. So that's add. So then we add that. So then we have seven and four. Um, hmm. So I'm not, let's see. So I'm not sure why it's three and four. Seven and four. Let me compare them. Mm -hmm. Let me add some stuff to the stack. I uh, just make it a bit clear. There we go. And then we'll be able to see it a bit better. Yeah. Uh, that obviously doesn't help with this, but. We printed it multiple times. Uh, so this, then that would probably make it a bit better to attack here. Make it a bit more clear what's going on. Uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> Alright, so we can kind of walk through what's happening here. So yeah, we have an empty stack. Uh, and then we push one. <clears throat> then two. Yeah, it becomes three. We have four and three. Yeah, and it pops it all off, then it pushes them on, and then one, because four is greater than three. But it does push them in the wrong order, so that is a problem. Uh, yeah. So we want to push B first, and then A. Yeah. Alright, uh, next, right? 
All right, so now we can look at what happened. <clears throat> so yeah, one and then becomes three. And we have four and three. One, four, and three. Um, <clears throat> and then let's see. So we jump here, we consume the one. So then we just have four and three. Uh, and we should go to add. So then it ends. Um, Yeah, so it's the same. So the jump is not working. Uh -huh. Actually, this should be one. There we go. So that is probably closer to what we wanted. Uh, so let's see what happens. So now it is different. Uh, actually, let's change that to. Okay, so now we're one, and then it becomes three. Um. Uh, thank you for following. I appreciate that. Um, I still can't. Still not sure how to pronounce your name. Apologize for that. But yes, thank you. Uh, okay, then we have four and three. Then we have the one. Uh, and then we just have four and three again. We push four again. So, all right. Uh, change the one. The index might not be working. Yeah, so that is more like what we want. Yeah, because then we have three, four, three. Push the one, four, three, and then we add it. So, the index is not right. Um... So why would that be? It should start from zero. So do we need to do like that minus one? Then it should work as expected, but uh, but I'm not sure why it could work like that. Um. Well, let's print what the index is actually. Uh, so this can be IP. Uh, and yeah, so we just print that, and then we'll also print it after. Uh, it, yeah, it is zoo. All right, and if we run that now, um, <coughs> five, then it becomes one. Um, all right hey let me look at this so zero one two three four five so that is right and zero one but then it works as though it is here so we skip Um, hmm. oh, because at the end of each iteration, okay, yeah, 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 so we do have to do minus one, okay, all right, that makes sense. At the end of each iteration, we, um, we add to it, so that is why we need to do that. Uh, yeah, so that is cool now, so now that works, so now we can jump conditionally, uh, that's pretty cool. So this can work as loops. Um, yeah, you could use this for loops or for just like if statements. Uh, yeah, you should be able to jump um, further in the program. So like then you can do like that, <clears throat> and zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So and then if you jump to six, uh, it should just print one. Does that? Uh, oh, because we're not actually compared. 
who okay so that is actually so we need like a conditional jump and a jump jump uh yeah but that uh, it still doesn't work because there's only one oh Okay, uh, now that worked. Uh, yeah, so we need to fix that, actually. Um, I will... Let's see. Yeah, so let's have a conditional jump and then just standard jump. Alright, and then we can add that here. So, go down here. So this is our conditional jump. Uh, and then, let's see, I think, yeah. So and this can be our standard jump. So for the standard jump, uh, I will leave that. So we don't need to pop anything. We just want to set that. Uh, we should probably check that it's not out of balance. But uh, it should work, yeah. So uh, I'm going to not print the stack each iteration. Yeah, that makes it kind of confusing. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we have one, one. Uh, it doesn't, oh yeah, we need to actually consume. No, we don't need to. I can just get rid of this compressor. We don't need it. And then, all right, so it prints the one. So yeah, now if we just push the one, then that is what gets printed. Um, <clears throat> let me get rid of this print stack. All right, uh, yeah, so. Hmm. All right, yes, that was a problem. I uh, need to update the index. Uh, yeah, so now that works. So. Now we have conditional jumps and uh, just jumps. Uh, so let's actually check um, if IP is greater than or equal, or if it's greater than, um, let's see, program size, yeah. Graded machine program size. Uh, air jumping out of balance. Maybe cannot jump out of balance. Uh, that might be better. Cannot uh, jump out of balance. Alright, and then we can grab the same thing and put it here. Oops. <coughs> Messed that up. Okay, yes. So now. The stuff is what it works actually. Um, so that is working, and then if we change it to six, it should not. Uh, it does not because we need to do equal to, I think. No. Uh -huh. So that, all right. Um, so that should be an error. It is not uh, because we subtract one. All mm. Print that out. Um, I. Yeah, so it's that. Um, there we go. That's what we want. Uh, yeah, we need to iterate that by one. So we can actually get it with this. Ah, that's one. 
Yeah. Alright, can I jump out of bounds? Um... Yeah, and then if we change back to 5, it should still do. There we go. Alright, so that is working. Let's make sure it works with the compare as well. Alright, and... <clears throat> Okay, and I think we need to change that to six. No, we need to change it to seven. Right now, if you run this, then it works. Okay. Uh, we don't need to print that. Uh, let's see. We need to print um. Like it. We need to print either of those. Uh, yes. All right. So that seems to be working so let's actually go ahead and commit that uh, if i can spell uh implemented mission which push the the result of the comparison to the top of the stack then added jumps both conditional and non and non condition uh yeah yeah it's pretty descriptive let's push that and it should be working if we look here um yes all right so that is pretty cool uh yes now we have conditions uh yeah so we can basically write like a whole program in this now uh, that's pretty cool because you can do quite a few things whoops uh let's look at some other some other things here hmm yeah bitwise operations uh we'll need to add some of those uh there is a lot let me see This might be interesting to read actually um <clears throat> i mean i'm not going to read through it now but i might actually just save that yeah i'll read through that uh that will probably be seems like there's some cool stuff here actually. uh wait is there any like good list of instructions all right arithmetic Ooh, we could add mod uh that's probably a good idea actually uh i did not think of mod so i can just go right into the mod Line. Okay. Uh so let's get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, uh, and then we'll yeah, just work the same as all the other ones. And then we will print. Uh so we should be able to right after B we can do not and we'll pop both of them. I don't know if we need that. I forget how mod works. Um, let's just try that. All right. So if we go back, whoops. There. We go. Uh, so zero. So that uh that should be right. Uh, change it to two. Yeah. Right. Uh, still zero. One. All right. Um. Yes. So. Let's see, something like um, 15 and then 3. Uh, yeah, 3. Zero. All right, yeah, so that seems to be working. Um, whoops. So that is, that is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, is there any other relation? All right, equals. Oh, we could have just done it like that. Yeah, all right. Then we also have the uh, less than or equal to. I'm not going to... Well, I guess it wouldn't take that long to implement. Uh, I should probably do that. So, yeah. All right. So, it's very similar, just with uh, equal. Oops. I just completely messed that up. Uh, yeah. Equal. Uh, this needs to be greater first. All right, and we can add that here. 
uh, greater than or equal to less than or equal to. All right, uh, that should be working. <coughs> Saying to test it. Uh, Less than or equal to, uh, and then we will we'll just see what it pushes to the top of the stack. Uh, yeah. So if we add that here. Uh, all right. So we'll do the greater than equal to um. Right, that is not bad actually. Uh, and then we make it again, and we'll paste it in and swap this around. But obviously, a lot of this can be abstracted out into a separate function, uh, which I will get to that. Um, that's probably that'd be yeah. Before it gets too large, I'm gonna. Do a lot of that, make it easier to work with. But right now I'm not gonna do that. Uh all right. Same basis. All right, uh, I seem to have messed something up. Sorry, mm -hmm. this is fine. Uh, and that is the problem. Alright, and there we go. <clears throat> Alright, so let's do that. So that should put one. Uh, one. Okay. Uh, and then... One. Alright, so that looks good. And then if we change it to greater, it should be the complete opposite, except for the equal to. Uh, yeah. So I'm changing it to equal. And it's one and there we go all right so that seems to be working so that is pretty cool uh let's see what else all right nope uh so that is probably a good operation to have and halt um all right we have right basically um it's print but all right so nope um Do something like that, and then that that'll just completely skip um an iteration. So it's basically just empty. Um. So yeah. So if we just do it here, uh, something like that. We need that. Um, and then if we go down here, and we add no. Then, yeah, I think that's what we want to do. That should work. Uh, one. All right, yeah, so that can kind of add some buffers. Like, so if you do, um, <coughs> you do something like this, right? And then we do that inst jump. And we jump to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Jump to 5. Then, yeah, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, wait, no. Probably messed something up in the jump. Let's see. No, because we're not popping, so um I'm not sure why I would do that. I'll get rid of that entirely. Oh. Uh I know what the problem is. We need to put it right there. Alright, uh now we're just gonna do that. So let's yeah, so basically it just adds like a buffer to, or a buffer space. Uh, yeah. So we can add as many as we want. Uh, so now we make it, to so make it seven. Yeah, but then we can change it to anything, six or five, and then we'll output the same thing, because it's just skipping. Uh, so that is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have, nope, no. Nope. Oh, um, 
So would Halt would exit without an error, I assume. Uh, I feel like Halt should be the last. Halt. Uh, whoops. I put hold, not hold. Um, Alright, yeah, so then if we just do... Then, yeah, we we'll just exit and, like, um, return zero. Mm -hmm. so we'll put it all the way at the end. Yeah, so we'll return zero. And then it should just end. Yeah. And then if we print the stack at the end. Uh, it should just be the one. Uh, and there's not. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, because we return. So actually, we could just, um, see, how would you... Uh, cause I wanna, <clears throat> I wanna break out of the loop. So if we set this equal to um, and I think that would just exit. Uh, no. Oh yeah, cause we don't wanna return. Alright, uh, right, there's that. Alright, yes. So then we just had the fourteen on the stack. Uh, that is what I wanted to do. Uh, yes, yeah, so we could put this anywhere. Then we would have, uh, well, actually, then it wouldn't exit. Well, it does exit, but different. So we get rid of that, actually, and then we can uh, do that. Then there should be 14 and 27 on the stack. Uh, yeah, all right, and 27 is on the top. All right, so I think Holt is working. So let's actually maintain it back. Uh, implemented. Uh, nope, and Okay, uh, let me just make sure it worked properly. Yes, yes indeed. All right, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Are there some other ones? So, strap. All right, load and push onto the stack. <clears throat> All right, um, yeah. So, jump, uh, yeah, jump to a location. If the stack handling is zero, it's not zero. All right, well, that's, let's see, um, I suppose I could implement something like that. So when I have compare jump, I guess that might make more sense to have jump zero. Yeah, perhaps. So let's actually move it around. Zero jump and then, uh, not zero jump. All right, and we'll change this here. I've seen it again. And there we go. All right. So now, yeah. Uh, so then it works a little bit different. Uh, so if I go down to C jump, yeah. Uh, actually, let me move that, and I'll move it down below. Alright, so this is zero jump. So if it is zero, let me do that. And then we can also have not zero jump. And yeah, so that should now work. Um, the not zero jump is basically the same as the comparison jump that we had before. It should be. So if we do, well, kind of. Actually, no, no. Uh, that is not right, because we don't want it to just be this, uh, just if not equals zero. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, um, <coughs> yeah, 
So that should jump. Uh, we just need to write the index to jump to. Uh, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. So we'll jump to 6. And OK. So it does pop the item, the topmost item off the stack. But if you do this, then it should. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to push it back. If it, yeah, uh, actually, let's get rid of the hole. Well, no, because the topmost item can go away, I think. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the compare, actually. Uh, okay. Yes, we do have zero jump, actually. And there we go, okay. So that seems to be working. And then if we make it not zero jump, it should jump. Yeah. All right. So that look, that's looking good. Uh, yeah. So now we have all these same operations. So call. All right. Uh, I don't think we need that. And we don't need return. We're going to need this eventually, but uh, I don't think we need it now. All right. Uh, I don't know what this not sure exactly what that means. Um, yeah. All right. So this is how we actually convert. So here's the enter. Um, oh, so that's like storing a value. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's on the stack. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that stuff. So let's see. Let's look at. Um, assembly let's look at the instructions in x86 assembly intel.com do they have just like instruction set uh oh it's in and in here very nice amd this isn't what i wanted okay all right here is instruction set so let's see so move, so that is with um, registers. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we don't have registers at the moment. Uh, conditional move, so yeah. That's like the same thing. Uh, byte swap, push slash pop, add, add with carry. Uh-huh, I multiply, mm-hmm, and compare, yeah. Uh-huh. So something we, we're going to need, well, I think the labels would just, wouldn't be in the actual bytecode, but it would instead be in the assembly. Uh, let me actually, or, uh, let's see. Yeah, so that is what the bytecode looks like for uh, this. Let's actually do that and it should change. So that is different. Yeah, it has this extra stuff up here. Ah, uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the byte code for the language. Um, simple byte code at the moment. Ah, uh, so that was all of them, I suppose. That's all that goes into x64 assembly. Uh -huh. Let's see. Does this have the instruction set? Okay. Um, all right, let's see. We could look at I'm sure what's happening here. It's a bit strange. If I reload this, will it fix it? Uh, no. Okay, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, <clears throat> we can look at VM, uh, that instruction set, and see what he uses. 
So we can see all the instructions here. So I wish this would work. I'm not, I'm not sure why that's happening. Uh, window manager stuff. All right. So yeah, we have the nope, uh, push, drop. All right. So I don't know what drop does. Probably you just wouldn't. No, maybe the same as pop though. Maybe pop is drop. Uh, all right. So duplicate swap. We have that. Uh, yep. That is integer. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unsign. Okay. So that was sign. And then this is float. Uh, jump if so we have similar to jump if uh, return yeah so I don't the so I'll need to look into how all these work uh, not yeah, so this is like comparisons um okay equal all right yeah there's quite a few here um <clears throat> yeah okay well, so that's cool. Uh, I'm going to actually look through a lot of this uh, source code because there is a lot of cool stuff in here. But I think for today, I'm going to go ahead and push this. So let me actually clean it up a little. Uh, let's see. Uh, I already have that. Let's open it up. And we'll just ignore that for now. All right. Uh, that would be good. All right. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That. All right. Uh, that's not going to work. So I will go ahead and exit after this. All right. I don't need that. All right, so let's open the gate for it. Uh, all right, there we go. Now it should work. So, uh, yeah. All right, so let's also add a reading. All right, so let's see. Okay, um, <coughs> a tin. A tin reading. Virtual machine. Ah, uh, yeah. <coughs> Simple. Well, virtual manipulation of a virtual machine in C. Uh, planning to implement a custom assembly and assembler as well as right and. Once it matures, a uh, programming language which compiles to the byte code. All right. Uh, yeah. So that covers it pretty well. Uh, I can go more in depth. Okay. Uh, so I can just go ahead and commit that. Uh, added git here and read me. Um, and modify the jump. Uh, jump instruction. All right. So I fix that. Okay, uh, and that push, then there we go. All right, so that is going to be it for today. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time.